You're watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. I'm Bo Williams and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories happening right now. And topping the list for us tonight, the Vols still on the road to a ring. The Big Orange up against the Stanford Cardinal today in Omaha. Vols getting off to a seemingly strong start. Four hits in the first two innings, but leaving three runners on base. While Stanford matched hit for hit, but going up four runs by the end of the third inning. After three, the Vols swapped chases. Dole Lander for Burns, and well, he brought the heat again with triple-digit pitches. Uh, well, putting a lid on the Stanford offense. Then big orange bats, as you see here, waking up in the fifth. The Vols grabbing four runs to tie, then stretching out into a two-run lead after seven. Chase Burns going on to get the win for Tennessee. The Vols beating Stanford today 6-4, sending now the team home to the West Coast. So Stanford's gone. Tennessee, well, they live to play another day. The guys were excited about the challenge, and I think we had a good game plan. So the offensive approach was there. But it was just kind of a kick in the gut to all of a sudden think we're going to be ahead in the first. Now we're down in the first. And that was a theme early in the year. Um, we expected to do great things right out of the shoot. And it, when it didn't go well, the guys got deflated. And somewhere along the year, we learned to respond the right way. When it, when it gets tough, you, you got to get a little tougher, or whatever cliche you want to throw at it. So uh, I think we grew up as a team and handled situations better. Like that in the middle of the game when you're down four to nothing. I think this is the third time we've come back from four to nothing. Yeah, we're glad you're watching the seven because right now we know the Vols probably have their eyes elsewhere. Right now, LSU and Wake Forest are taking on each other on the diamond. Team takes on the loser of that game tomorrow night at seven. So Tennessee can either see the Tigers or the Demon Deacons. Our six sports squad staying in Omaha as long as the Vols do, and we'll get their preview of the next round tonight at 11 o'clock. Our next Big 7 story for you, a big celebration here and across the country. June 19th, Juneteenth, a day to remember the downfall of slavery here in the U.S. and increasingly an official government holiday after more than 100 years of ad hoc celebrations. In East Knoxville this morning, the rain could not stop the marchers as they paraded from Chilhowee Park down Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue to Dr. Walter Hardy Park. The city's MLK Commission moving its annual march to coincide with Juneteenth. We teach our children about not only the Juneteenth holiday, which is emancipation for the freedom of the slaves, it is the date that people heard exactly in their particular state when they were free. You know, history is important. You know, we've had some controversy about historical things being taught, but history is important. If you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you're going a lot of times. People will begin to come out, uh, regardless of color, regardless of race, I think that's very, very important because just because it's a celebration of freedom for African Americans doesn't mean it's just a black holiday because we live in the land that we say that all men are created equal. Not exactly where we want to be as a nation, as a people. Um, there's still a lot of things that we have to figure out. But, you know, that was just the first step in claiming that freedom. Now, the day also giving us a chance to see how the Beck Cultural Exchange Center spots light history. The center excited to be celebrating with a bigger crowd this year and a new exhibit as well. The Beck hosted guided tours and even invited a local storyteller to reenact the moment enslaved people in Galveston, Texas learned of their freedom. Today is an exciting day because we get to talk about the history of our country. We get to tell the stories and we get to reflect on those stories so we can learn some things in history so we can move forward. That new exhibit, by the way, honors Alex Haley, the author of Roots and the autobiography of Malcolm X, has a connection to Tennessee, if you didn't know, spending some time in his early years in Henning and living his final years in Clinton. Our next big story, the growing emphasis on Juneteenth, the holiday, nothing new. People started celebrating the year after the end of the Civil War, marking the day word reached Galveston, Texas, a former Confederate stronghold that people who had been kept in slavery were now free. But it wasn't until 2021 President Biden signed the bill into law, making Juneteenth a federal holiday. This is actually the first official Juneteenth for Tennessee's government and the first time it has been a paid holiday for the city of Knoxville. The on the event state. that happened in Texas that most people don't know what it is. On the state level, the road to get here wasn't easy and still has some detractors. The push for a paid holiday continued to stall until Governor Bill Lee introduced his own legislation this year. Still, though, it wasn't a unanimous decision. 32 state lawmakers voted against it or just present. 
just an event that happened in Texas that most people don't know what it is. I just didn't think merited a holiday in Tennessee. People were looking for a reason for for a holiday because that doesn't seem like that rises to the level that deserves a holiday just because people were told uh, that the war had ended, the slavery had ended. It deserves that type of recognition. Initially, we tried a paid holiday. It didn't take. Uh, about five, six years ago, one of the members brought a bill for a uh, commemorative day. It didn't take. I ain't mad at them. It tells me that we've got more education to do. By the way, there are currently 12 paid holidays in Tennessee with the addition of Juneteenth. One more Juneteenth story in our Big 7 list for you. We're learning more about a name you heard just a moment ago, Dr. Walter Hardy. Remember, that's the name of the park where today's parade ended. Dr. Hardy was a figure worth remembering in Knoxville's African-American community. Dr. Walter S.E. Hardy Jr. was a well-known black physician here in Knoxville, starting his practice back in the 60s when segregation was still prominent in the South. Dr. Hardy's grandfather represented South Carolina as one of the first black legislators after the Civil War. And his legacy continues on, getting a moment of recognition today from Cherokee Health System, one of its facilities, the East Knoxville Health Center, known as the Hardy Professional Building. Now, the building was a physician's office where African-American men and women could practice medicine and where patients could be seen by a doctor no matter their race. I'm 61, and I probably knew Dr. Hardy until I was six years old. So there's not much you remember as being a child up to six years old. But uh, I just know he was a major influence and I know my mother probably had nowhere to go without Dr. Hardy. At that time, I mean, the doctors that black people could go to were very limited. And Dr. Hardy made sure he was accessible, whether you had uh, the government support whatever you needed to be able to uh, uh, go to a doctor and get proper care. Medical Center sits across from the park, which also bears Dr. Hardy's name, a tribute to Dr. Hardy's work, his family legacy, and it honors other black physicians who serve the Knoxville community from 1869 to 1989. Our next Big 7 and 7 story for you tonight. We are learning more from parents of Covenant School students who do not want the shooter's so-called manifesto to be released. In court petitions filed in the Chancery Court in Davidson County, parents of students argue that putting out the manifesto would potentially encourage future shooters, rewarding their attacks with publicity. The deadline is Tuesday at noon for any other people who want to petition the judge. The next hearing, by the way, is set for July 12th. And our final Big 7 story for you, rain, finally, lots of it. Check out this view from a dash cam headed down I-40. This was earlier this afternoon. Rain, slow traffic, water ponding up on the roadway. The downpours stopped around the 4 o'clock hour for most people. And the view outside tonight, I just looked out the back door right before showtime. A mix of gray, maybe even a few pockets of blue. But we're not done with the rain just yet. Let's check in with meteorologist Margo Altshuler. She's watching everything for us from the Six Storm Center. Hey, Margo. That is true. We are not done yet with this rainbow. We will continue to see rain actually as we progress throughout this evening. Here's a look outside right now from our radar. We're actually about to see a giant storm or excuse me, shower pass over Knox County and actually we should pass over the station here in a few. We're also seeing some heavy downpours near Teleco Plains and a few kind of in the uh, northern part portion of Anderson County closer to La Follette. Now moving forward throughout the night tonight we should see all this decrease but we do expect to see more rain going into the rest of the week. This isn't a bad thing though. Looking at our drought monitor, this was last updated on Thursday. Every Thursday we see the drought monitor updated. All of the valley under that moderate risk for drought and the rest under that dry risk. Now we will be seeing a lot of rain over the next couple of days as I mentioned, which is going to help reduce our drought here in East Tennessee, which I know a lot of farmers and people with gardens and lawns desperately need. Now we will have a solid night going into the night tonight and more rain tomorrow and we're going to be staying active much of the week this week thanks to that unsettled weather pattern this is just a brief look at our precipitation chances over the next seven days tomorrow again 60 percent chance going into wednesday thursday 40 percent friday saturday 
30, and then dropping down to 20 on Monday and Sunday. But there's going to be a lot of rain over the next couple of days coming up. I'll have just about how much we can expect and what our rain chances look like going into the day tomorrow.